Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Chris and this is my channel Barnon 11970 and as always I'd like to start out my videos by thanking you for taking the time to hear what I have to say and I hope you will because I want to share an experience that I just had that is just so beautiful that I wanted to as soon as I got home sit down and record this video for people to listen to and hopefully maybe restore a little faith in themselves or to see what kind of impact you can have on somebody and it could be a complete stranger because that's exactly what happened to me today um, I had to stop at the bank and um, make a deposit well actually not bank I have a federal credit union but I want to make that perfectly clear I would never put my money in a bank again that's a videos for another time but after that I went to Wendy's because every now and then I get the cravings and I get like french fries and I get an organic green tea as those who you who may or may not know uh, my wife is a vegan and I've become a functional vegetarian I don't think I could go the whole vegan route but as right now as my cat is rubbing himself against my face uh, I am an extreme animal lover I have three stray cats that I've taken in. So I went through the drive through and once you go through the drive through you can do this backtrack across this one little parking lot to get to the road to get back home because I wasn't going to work or anything. And I'm thinking myself that, you know, if there's a couple of birds, I'll throw a couple of my french fries out because I like feeding animals and one time I was there it looked like there was a bunch of birds going through garbage and I was like you know what let them have some real food not garbage and I stopped and fed them so I was thinking alright if there's some birds I'll stop and throw out some of the french fries and feed the birds because it's just a nice thing to do and I didn't see any birds but all of a sudden across, walking across my car well not across the car but in front of the car is this little stray kitten had to have been maybe four or five months old at best black and white you could see the white part was very dirty its hair was disheveled you could tell this was a homeless animal and I felt so bad for this I wanted to try and take this cat now I know we probably would not be able to afford to have a fourth cat but at the very least I could have taken it home and maybe fed it a little bit and found a home for it but it crawled underneath this person's car. Now, at the time, I didn't know anybody was in this car. So I took a couple of my french fries, and I tried to hand it, and you could tell this cat was scared. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to leave it on the ground. And as soon as I left it on the ground, cat came over and grabbed them. Like, it, was, it hasn't seen food in a while. So then I, I just parked the car. Now, meanwhile, I'm parked in a spot where cars are supposed to go past if they go this route most people don't they usually just use the normal exit and go on to the main road but I stop get out of my car and I try and because the kitten at this point goes underneath somebody's car so I'm trying to push the food a little bit maybe try and get it to come out and you could tell this kitten was not very trusting of people so it was definitely not somebody's cat and again as I saw it closer up very dirty cat but cute and adorable and definitely could benefit from a home so I tried to get it but every time I tried to move you know closer the cat would go further away so I'm like alright let me at least put the food and as I get up I notice there's a person in the car that the kitten is under so I wanted to at least go over and say listen I want to let you know there's a kitten under your car so just in case if you're backing up you know I don't want you to you know accidentally run this kitten over so it ends up being this elderly woman probably in her late seventies by the name of Joan um, so we talk about that and she tells me she has nine kittens all strays and she asked me if I could try and get the cat because she would take it home and give it a loving home so I tried my very best but it ended up ultimately running away the closer I got to it the more it started getting scared and I at least had the satisfaction of knowing that I fed it a little bit of food so at least for the time being it had something in its stomach so we started talking a little bit 
comes to find out she's got a son that's has like third stage pancreatic cancer her husband who's in his 90s has alzheimer's and basically really isn't there but she said how you know one of her cats would sit on his lap and it makes his day and keeps him calm and we started getting into conversations about you know talking about how with my health how i've tried to improve things more naturally i started talking about things like you know black seed oil which is something i just recently found so i might do another video on this another time but in the meantime anybody that's listening to this look up and research organic non-gmo food grade black seed oil also known as cumin c-u-m-i-n this stuff is almost like a miracle oil the first day i took it all of a sudden my health got better my wife experienced the same exact thing but that's again a video for another time so i mentioned that to her and she said well that's a coincidence because i've i've never heard of that oil but even though she said at her age she forgets things she won't forget that because she says every day in her backyard she feeds the birds and she feeds them black seeds so she said she'll absolutely remember this and we started talking about all these other things and i was telling her about her son that and i said i can't i i have to tell you that what i'm about to tell you is technically illegal in some states so i said you know if he can obtain this legally in other words states that legalize things like marijuana i was telling her about cannabis oil where you can actually take the cannabis plant and extract the oil out of it and there have been researches especially overseas in europe where they said it could potentially cure cancer now i can't say it will because i don't know offhand and i'm not going to say anything that i'm not sure about i can only go by what i've heard and people have said that it could whether it does or not i can't make that determination i'm not a doctor but i said at least look into it because i even said if he's at a point where he's stage three he's basically on his last legs at that point what do you have to lose because one of my best friends died of pancreatic cancer just this year and he was only 48 years well he was about to turn 48 they actually buried him on his birthday so what do you got to lose and then i was talking about you know toothpaste and the fluoride how sodium fluoride is also found in rat poisoning and she said you know i heard stuff about that and we were thinking about it and i was telling her about how you could make your own toothpaste by getting organic coconut oil things like that and we started talking about these other things and i was talking about it's like did you know that george washington had cannabis the parchment our Declaration of Independence was written on was hemp, which is made from cannabis, a.k.a. what they now call marijuana. And I was explaining to her the reason that they made cannabis, a.k.a. marijuana, illegal is it was actually competing with the paper industry. And there's a reason why, even though it's preserved, that our document, which was made of hemp, is still here even though several hundred years have passed and you could have a piece of paper that'll last like 25 years before it starts crumbling and browning it's because hemp lasts longer and since it was competing with a billionaire company or at least a millionaire at the time they squashed it out made it into something illegal there was a lot of things that we talked about and i realized and she thanked me now, this is a person I've never met in my life, and she had, you know, if you've seen videos of me, I, I have a shaved head, I have a very long beard, I could probably look like somebody you don't want approaching your car. And yet, she thanked me. She asked for my name. We shook hands. She said, she did, actually never even heard of YouTube. She didn't know what it was. So I actually explained to her about YouTube and where, you know, there are people that are not paid by CNN or the government or MSNBC or Hollywood, and they actually share their opinions by making videos. So I said, you could type in something like black seed oil and look it up and get research. 
She never knew about that. She even asked about my channel, and I told her, but she probably won't remember it. But I said, if you ever see a shaved head, you know, with a, the long beard like I have, you know, say hello. So, Joan, if you ever listen to this, hello, because you've inspired me for this video. But this was somebody I never met, never knew, literally just walked up to her while she's minding her own business in her car, feeding the birds with her french fries or whatever food she was eating. And she was kind enough to have this conversation. She loved the fact of hearing all the things about me taking in stray animals. And we talked about how the average person is just no longer kind. I mean, how many strangers do you actually have these kind of deep conversations with? And that's one of the funny things, like I always say about my other channel. I get people on my other channel, which is a comic book channel, that absolutely hate me. Now, I don't murder people. I don't rape children. I, I don't bash people for their their religious beliefs or sexual preferences. I don't commit crimes. But they hate me because I think differently in the way of collecting comic books. And I realized, after this conversation, those people no longer matter because this woman who I never met before, who could have easily been scared that some hoodlum in her mind was approaching her car, got out of her car, had a conversation, shook my hand and thanked me, and said, she's going to look up these things. And she's never heard of them before. And I explained how the medical industry is there to keep you sick because it's a business. And I really think that because of our conversation, I changed this woman's path and I think ultimately changed it for the better. And I just want to share that to let people know that especially in this day and age where you're going to be bullied, you're going to be attacked, you're going to be criticized for having a different belief than what the mainstream people are programmed to think who are too afraid to ever go on their own because they don't want to not fit in, you'll feel like you don't create an impact or not enough impact. And it's ironic because it's, it's just coming to me now, um, which actually makes sense and puts it into a greater perspective. There's a new Spider-Man cartoon, and this is why I love having the comic book thing because I see a lot of life's references sometimes in something as simple as comic books. You know, some most of my haters, they could never think that deep. And if they heard that, all they'd do is get mad at me instead of saying, you know what, maybe I need to think deeper. But there's a new preview of a Spider-Man cartoon that's coming out. A, a, like, not a live-action movie, but a cartoon based on uh, Miles Morales, which is another Spider-Man. And he meets the original Spider-Man, which is Peter Parker. And when they first meet in this trailer, the Miles Morales character says, you know, how do I go about saving the world? And Peter Parker says, you don't, don't think of it as saving the world. Think of it as saving one person. And I think people that are caring, which seems to get rarer and rarer these days, we worry about wanting to change the world. And you just can't do that. Many people will resist. Many people will not listen. Many people will be out of reach, even on the internet. But if you can change the life of one person, one stranger, and it improves their life, even if they never see you again, never thank you, never you never know what path they take, understand that you did positive change and you created good in this world because who knows where their information and their life will go. And knowing that you can change somebody's life is a very, it should change the way you view life because how you interact and how you treat people will determine that person's path from that point on, even if it's a minor path. So take that responsibility seriously and appreciate the fact that your kindness can create a positive change, maybe in somebody's world. Because if you really think about it, we all live separately in our own worlds and we're sharing the experience with others in their own world. That's why people can have different perspectives looking at the same thing. It's everybody's individual worlds interacting with one another. 
So unless a person wants to change their world, they won't. But that doesn't mean you don't have an impact or an influence on it, both positive and negative. And the people that create negative pathways tend to not care or tend to find enjoyment because, like they say, misery enjoys company. And that's why groups tend to be, overall, very miserable. Now, when you're by yourself and independent, it can be, feel very lonely because, like they say, it's lonely at the top. Now, top doesn't mean you're the best or the wealthiest. It just means you're separating yourself from the crowd. And that can be lonely at times because the more different you are from the quote-unquote herd, the less people you can communicate with who will uh, understand, let alone appreciate, what you speak of. They are few and far between. But it's the difference between apples that fall off the tree that are scattered all around the ground that have worms in them and bugs in them and they're rotted as compared to the maybe five or six really great apples that reach the top of the tree that got all the sunlight, that absorbed all the rainwater, and that were the best fruits. Those are the hardest ones to obtain. The scattered fruit all around the tree that has fallen and is half rotten, that's all over to be found and plentiful. Quality over quantity. And this conversation I had with this beautiful woman, and I don't mean beautiful because beautiful she was beautiful, I mean beautiful soul. I mean, like I said, she was about, I think she said like 78, 79, in her late 70s. She had arthritis to the point where she couldn't stand. And she's been taking all these medications that are making her worse. And I was telling her that, like, because she said she heard of coconut oil before. And she said it was something new. And I said, no, this is not something new. This is something that's been around for a very long time. It's only new because, thankfully, the Internet has stopped the control ability by silencing people. Because just think, 200 years ago, when there, no, where there was no Internet, there were no planes, there were no cars. 300 years ago, when there were no trains, no air balloons... People got their conversation through word of mouth in, in their own local village. How far could you go on a horse? You know, there were people that would, you know, during the California gold rush, the people from the east would travel to the west and lose half their family on the trip. The internet has been able to eliminate some of the suppression but they found their own tools by attacking the very people that have the truth. You call a person a crazy conspiracy theorist, people will not take you seriously. So they've learned the best way to silence people. And a lot of people, including myself, start giving up. But I realized that I impacted this woman and placed her on a new path. Because just imagine if that conversation never took place and I didn't care about that kitten and just drove on my merry way, avoiding everything. What if that kitten would have been run over? And what if that woman who has nine cats saw that as she backed up, she saw the remains of a baby kitten that she just ran over, and it devastated her emotionally? What if she had a heart attack and died? Or what if she got into a deep depression that she no longer cared or wanted to care for her husband because she felt horrible that she just killed something she loves because she was talking about how she loves animals and she would have felt horrible and she thanked me for letting me know. And that's when she said, you know, if you can grab that kitten, even though I have nine cats, I'll take it home. She wouldn't have learned anything that I talked about. Now, who knows? Her life would have been just the way it was, the regular, ordinary day. And just a trip to Wendy's on a craving created a new path, and it, it made me really feel good. And there'll be people that will still hate me for whatever their selfish, petty reasons are. Those people I no longer worry about anymore. Because I just realized that my voice and my timing in that situation helped a person 
potentially do something that could not only improve her life, but could improve possibly her husband's and her child, her son. And that's an amazing feeling, and it takes a heck of a lot of responsibility. And maybe that's why I've always loved Spider-Man. Because one of the things about Peter Parker, and his famous line was, with great power comes great responsibility. Well, how you treat others should be taken as a great power. Because if you treat somebody bad, it puts them on a path that could lead to destruction. If you treat them good... You can actually inspire somebody. You can actually motivate somebody. You may actually have a person that wanted to commit suicide, but all of a sudden change their mind because your kind gesture or your kind words put them on a different path. And when you see it as what you do and what you say to others can impact their lives, well, that puts a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. And that's why most people don't ever want to think that deeply. They don't want to know that their hatred and evilness can actually affect somebody else's path. Or maybe they get joy out of doing that to someone. But that takes a feeble, weak mind to be able to do that. Because like they say, it's easier to destroy than to create and some people get the satisfaction of the destruction. But I would rather spend 20 years making something beautiful that people appreciated, that I created out of my own thought and without using my own hands and created something wonderful than to just take a hammer and destroy it in two seconds. It doesn't take any talent to do that. So hopefully... And I, know, I don't even have to say hopefully. I know at some point somebody will just finish this video and now all of a sudden think in a more positive way. And if that is the case, then aren't you glad I made this video? Now, if I didn't make this video, that doesn't mean that your life all of a sudden you would have been a child murderer or all of a sudden you would hang yourself. I'm not going to sit here and think my ego is that strong to think that. You could have just gone on with your day. But if you found this video and it answered questions that you were thinking in your head or you were getting down on your knees and praying for, and it helped you in any way, then my words and my thoughts that were once in my head and now being out there shared with the universe has affected some stranger that I may never meet. And if you don't think that has an impact, then you don't believe in your own power. So positive and negative will affect the people around you, and that includes strangers or people on the internet that you just may not like. And if you get satisfaction out of knowing that you negatively impact somebody, then that says more about you than what you will ever do to them. So take how you treat people and see it as a power and use the great responsibility to understand, or what I like to say, understand, that the way you treat people, the way you talk to people, will put them on a path and you may never know where that path leads, but you could be partially responsible for where they went because you pushed them in that direction. Now, that doesn't mean they have to take it. So the blame is always 50-50 because that person always ultimately has a choice. And that's why, like on my other channel, I shut down the original channel because I was tired of the abuse. I was always trying to defend myself trying to disprove all these fake accusations and these mean things that they were saying. And they would gang up because there's more power in unity. No, there's not. There's more power in singularity. But I gave up and was mad and upset and hurt. And they got pleasure out of knowing they did that. Now, I could care less pretty much what people say because I have the choice of allowing it to bother me or just taking it as just somebody sharing their opinion that I don't agree with. And I've responded in a different way.
and handled it differently. Now, that doesn't change how they are. Some of them are still mean. Some of them are still going to believe BS stories about me, even if I put proof out there to disclaim it. Or dispute it, I mean. You can't change others, but you can change yourself. And I hope you do. So, that's it for this video. I hope it inspired some of you, and I know it will inspire some. If it inspired you in any way. This is the only thing I ask for. Sorry, kissing my cat for a second because he's rubbing his head against my face again. He wants attention. All I ask for is to hit the like video and hit the share video. Uh, hit button. The like button and the share button. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. I don't make videos as much as I used to, but as you could see, I still make them. Now, YouTube isn't going to notify you, so you're going to have to check periodically because even hitting the notification bell, YouTube is going to try and hide things like this. And I guarantee you that they're going to say this is unadvertiser friendly because they do it to every video. So if you ever want to join my Patreon or anything or check out my Oregon pyramids that I sell and make myself handmade, research it, look into it. I have all the links in the description. And I thank you for listening, even if you don't want to do any of those things. Because I don't do this in hopes to say, here, I gave you something, now you have to give me something. Do you want the best thing that you can do with this information? Go treat somebody nice. Do something good for a stranger. Bring back a conversation and change somebody's path in a different way. Show them a path that they never knew existed. You have a lot more power than even you believe. And that's why they put the word lie in belief. So thanks for listening. I hope you all have a great day. And I'll see you next video.